Uh, first, I think I need to complete the picture. Okay, thank you. Now, my, my main job is to make time for Nate. <laughs> Uh, so I think uh, really there's been some great stuff on healthcare and I just want to make a very uh, few comments. Uh, basically, looking at the interaction between health supply and demand, we really have a whole lot of networks of networks with uh, what I think is the key uh, unit of analysis is rather than the doctor or the patient or the interaction between the doctor and the patient, it's actually the inter a triad of the interaction between the patient, the formal carer, and the informal carer. And this is becoming much more important in chronic care plus uh, long-term care. And all these people have networks of networks which they belong to and can move through. And we also have knowledge networks and technology supply networks. Uh, and I guess the two key things I see is that how do these people uh, learn from each other? Uh, how do they learn to uh, use new technology, which is really the key driver in healthcare? Uh, so this idea of capability and learning, and how do they actually apply their capability? And my key thing is based on really the IT services orient architecture, we, I think we need that same architecture in health services. So my view is a service is an interaction between a need, a service and a resource. And the key issue really is the, um, the uh, technology resource changes driving expectations and then perceived needs. And the interaction between needs are a really can be thought of as sometimes a need is something that has been assessed by a professional while a person comes in as a consumer with a want uh, or a demand, uh, they also may come in with a fear and fear drives a lot of health behaviour. How am I doing? And you can add a whole lot of stuff about segmenting different, well, needs are really uh, have to, usually attached to people and uh, the idea of uh, capability and learning and how healthy behaviours really uh, can, if you like, shift the supply and demand interaction where the role of the demander becomes a supplier. So you get the co-production of health due to the, pay the person acting both as a carer and a patient. And th th these roles can change, obviously, over time. Uh, obviously, the great benefit of, of uh, any logic is the multi-scale multi concept. And I just showed that really disciplines in healthcare are multi-scale. And these drive the abstractions at different levels. So you've got this scope and level of detail. What I like to think is that it, any logic you can get uh, the best of both by having a T-shaped model where you have the right wide scope with perhaps a deep drilling down into one part and then you, and sometimes you can get a pie-shaped model with drilling down deeply into perhaps a couple of places. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a kind of a nice way to think of it. Uh, so the idea of scope and level of detail, the more concrete level, if you look at something like hospital infection control, you've got individual behaviour, ward behaviour and hospital behaviour over space and time. You can develop multi-level model, models and multi-scale simulation. This is work from one of my PhD students, which is going to be, uh, there's a publication available which anyone wants, I can give them a free copy. Uh, and again, uh, looking at that, that's what, maybe what it looks like in hospital infection control. As I say, these slides will be available. Uh, based on that work, we then looked at how you build a framework to do that, how you look at combining multi-scale model components, different ways of doing it. Uh, we then basically, the whole results were really a lot about producing confidence intervals in the interaction really between hand washing and other strategies. 
and they're quite interesting, not uh, counterintuitive effects. This has been uh, published in PLOS One, uh, which has been accepted will be out soon, so people can r read about it if, if they're interested. Uh, the demonstration, it was available uh, on Run the Model. Uh, the full fees is available, these links and the book uh, that's coming out with this multi-scale method. It's called a practical approach to multi-scale modelling. A model demonstration I won't do, but again, obviously, it's three levels at the hospital, the ward, and the more individual interaction level. Uh, so based on this, the method really combines what I call a realist approach or critical realist framework for those who are philosoph philosophically inclined, the systems approach, and uh, this idea of levels of abstraction that interact. And a concept from systems biology I like is the idea of interlevel causation, that individuals form groups and that formation of group then drives back the individual behaviour. So this interlevel bidirectional causation, which the systems biologists talk quite a lot about. And again, this is a sort of a, again, based on uh, that uh, framework, this idea of multi-scale holons that can be either compound or elements. And uh, this idea that you've got agents with agent, within agents and you can go down. Again, kind of a Russian doll uh, idea that uh, can get recursive and therefore quite tricky. Uh, I, just a couple of concluding comments. Healthcare and policy is really a mess of messes and they're uncertain, complex, conflicted and incomplete. Uh, half the care is necessary if only we knew which half. Uh, the supply, and they're very supply and preference sensitive, therefore the SD supply induced demand is a key component of this. And the preference sensitivity means we really have to look at serious individual preference behaviour with discrete choice experiments and we've got some models of doing that in any logic we're happy to share with you. I think the other issue is that we're often forced to act first, then later synthesise and analyse. And this is kind of, how do we do that and how can we use this modelling for that prosthesis to make us learn, help us learn faster? You, you wouldn't like to do that, but you often run out of time in healthcare. You often run out of time in health policy. Uh, so this idea of can you improve capability and learning uh, by, the, by these modelling, really, it's really a, it's a system post-mortem after the event more than before the event. So everything kind of, as we would say down under, everything is arse about. Uh, so healthcare is different because you've got a clinical process which is a very intellectual, diagnosing a disease, prescribing an intervention, assessing a technical and you've got the laying on of hands and the healing and nurturing, which is a very human-human care interaction. Uh, and uh, again, we really need to capture this idea of human behaviour, thinking, feeling, acting and interacting with really the informing, deciding, acting, communicating, really part of the sub-areas of thinking, but obviously they all interact. So rather than thinking, then acting, it's really this interaction between thinking, acting, feeling, and interacting. Uh, our current focus is really collaboration to produce useful models that get used. That's the hard bit. Uh, I think the software is good enough to be useful and bringing people along to be comfortable. Uh, and this is pretty uncomfortable to look across different methods. Uh, really looking at a regional service as the unit of, anal of analysis because really located in place and in community and how do we shift hospitals which have become very dangerous places, uh, how do we shift hospital service out into non-hospital primary care and communities, often really one of the key ideas in an area where we have increasing specialisation, uh, quite a difficult problem. We're doing some preference and discrete choice experiments between Nate's group and uh, a Sydney group, uh, and very Mark Pace has covered that excellently. And really, this bridging the gaps between the health policy, the health services management, really the cost quality access, and individual clinical care, and combining data and models through detailed collection instruments that Nate's using. So, help, we need it. And, Nate, you're on. <laughs>